Hello students, uh, welcome to a session of uh, nervous system. Uh, today's topic of discussion is Parkinson's disease, which is a, a degenerative disease characterized by uh, basically three cardinal features. First one is resting tremors, second is bradykinesia and third one is rigidity and in some cases even we can add gait abnormality. So Parkinson's disease is basically a uh, clinical uh, diagnosis. These three four features are very important to diagnose uh, Parkinson's. Coming to a pathophysiology of Parkinson's disease, it's basically a degeneration of dopaminergic neuron in the substantia nigra pars compacta, which will lead to reduced striatal dopamine. There will be a, de a degeneration of substantia nigra. This is important for your MCQ. Parkinson's is a degeneration of substantia nigra, which will lead to decreased production of dopamine. And uh, again, second pathological point is uh, there will be a, a intracytoplasmic proteinaceous inclusion known as Levy bodies. So Levy bodies, this is again important for your MCQ, Levy bodies and degeneration of substantia nigra, which will lead to decreased dopamine secretion. Let us see on the board what is the pathophysiology of Parkinson's disease. So as I told you in Parkinson's, there will be a degeneration of substantia nigra which has a function of uh, secretion of dopamine and normally this dopamine controls over subthalamic nucleus and globus pallidus. Because of degeneration, there will be a decreased dopamine. So because of decreased dopamine, there will be a loss of control over subthalamic nucleus and globus pallidus, which will result into the increased firing from the subthalamic nucleus and globus pallidus. So this increased firing, firing and these are the inhibitory uh, neurons. This increased firing of inhibited neurons will inhibit thalamus and this thalamus will again uh, decrease, the, decrease the activity of uh, 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 motor function of cortex. So the mo decreased motor function of cortex will lead to bradyka bradykinesia, uh, gait difficulty, rest, rest tremors. So these clinical features we can explain it on the basis of uh, this cycle. So coming to again clinical features of Parkinson's disease. As I told you, the cardinal features of Parkinson's diseases are rest tremor, rigidity, bradykinesia and gait impairment. So what do you mean by rest tremor? Rest tremor, you know that there are varieties of tremor like intention tremor, rest tremor, action tremor. So in Parkinson's, the rest tremor is a feature of uh, this disease. So this MCQ can be asked, your answer should be rest tremor. So when patient is doing some action, the tremors will obliterate or even patient can control those tremors by willpower but when when he is doing some other work other work with one hand he may develop a raised tremor of other hand so tremors will be like pin rolling tremors pin rolling so this is these are the uh, the vibration of uh, fingers are quite significant so the pin rolling tremor is a uh, cardinal feature of parkinson's disease coming to other feature that is rigidity. Rigidity, you know, there are two types of rigidity. One is clasp knife rigidity and lead pipe rigidity. And rigidity signifies involvement of extrapyramidal tract. If you uh, try to see the tone of uh, muscle of patients, uh, upper limb or lower limb, you will see a resistance. Resistance all over the action, it indicates lead pipe rigidity. And resistance, initial part of your action, it indicates uh, uh, cogwheel rigidity. So cogwheel rigidity as well as lead pipe rigidity, you can see it in Parkinson's disease. Coming to a bradykinesia, as name suggests, brady is uh, decreased or slow and kinesia is movement. So most of the movement of that patient will be slow. Patient may take uh, minutes or even hours for bathing or for doing regular activities like eating or like wearing, uh, wearing clothes. So the bradykinesia is again a uh, cardinal feature of Parkinson's disease. Coming to gait impairment. So the gait impairment is very significant. The gait impairment will start from when the, the patient of Parkinson's disease start to walk. There will be a difficulty in initiating the gait. So there will be a freezing. So initiating will be a problem. When patient walks, there will be a fascinating gait. The patient try to uh, lean forward and try to catch his own step. It is called fascinating gait and the steps will be small step. It will be not broad, which is in, in normal patient. And regarding your uh, span, the movement of your upper limb will be slow. The patient will walk like this fascinating gait. And when patient try to turn, 
there will be again difficulty in turning and even for there will be a difficulty in uh, stopping his uh, own uh, gait so this is a classical features of gait impairment and uh, even and when you try to push the patient of uh, parkinson's disease who is standing just stand behind a uh, patient and try to push him so normal patient will try to balance but in parkinson's disease that patient will not able to balance his own body so he will uh, go on walking for two or more steps so this is again characteristic feature of parkinson's disease coming to other motor features it includes micrographia micro means small graphia means handwriting so design the patient will notice that his handwriting is going small so micrographia mask faces mask faces is again parkinson's disease is a classical example example of emotional less face so mask faces reduced eye blink the frequency of eye blink will reduced hypophonia the tone of voice will go down so hypophonia dysphagia and freezing freezing i already explained you coming to non motor features so all features we, which we have discussed are motor features coming to non motor features the logic behind dividing these features into motor and non motor feature is that the patient who is receiving leodopa the motor features will improve but the non motor features will not improve always and the care of non motor uh, features needs a uh, specific attention and these non motor uh, features are like anosmia so anosmia is decrease uh, smell sensation so this is a classical example of decrease smell sensation so when you have been asked in mcq the anosmia is a feature of so your answer should be parkinson's disease other features are like sensory disturbance mood disorders mood disorders like depression uh, sleep disp- disturbances dementia if you remember we have discussed degenerative dementia ranging from uh, alzheimer disease to some uh, uh, psp that is progressive supranuclear palsy again the, one of the major cause of dementia in degenerative uh, diseases is the parkinson's and you need to differentiate between levy body dementia of levy bodies and dementia of parkinson's disease and you can very very well uh, classify or differentiate these two diseases by looking at what is the onset of dementia if the de- onset of dementia is less than 1 year then the diagnosis of uh, levy body disease is more because the dementia starts quite late in parkinson's disease so this is again important point for your uh, mcq point of view coming to autonomic dis- disturbances again this autonomic disturbances the classical feature is orthostatic hypotension orthostatic hypotension uh, patient will start complaining of symptoms like uh, blackouts in front of eyes when he when patient tries to stand so orthostatic hypotension means the, the blood pressure of patient will drop down by more than 20 in systolic and 10 in diastolic when patient uh, stands from lying down position so there is there are again high chances of fall coming to uh, next uh, disturbances like gastrointestinal disturbances the common is being constipation and the constipation is quite early feature of parkinson's disease even before uh, patient is getting motor uh, motor features like uh, tremors or rigidity so constipation may be there for 4 to 5 years earlier than other motor features other autonomic disturbances will include genital urinary disturbance and sexual dysfunction coming to a diagnosis so as i told you the diagnosis of parkinson's disease is clinical just look for cardinal feature where there is resting tremor where there is uh, rigidity where, where where there is bradykinesia and just ask patient to walk and by looking at his gait you will definitely diagnose that patient has a parkinson's disease coming to a treatment treatment is again divided into treatment of uh, motor features uh, you can uh, treat those feature with help of pharmacological and non pharmacological method and even there is a scope for a surgery like deep brain stimulation so we'll discuss it in detail coming to a pharmacological treatment the drug of choice is levodopa it's a most effective uh, symptomatic treatment and this levodopa is basically a precursor of this uh, dopamine so what we have seen in uh, pathogenesis that in parkinson's there will be a decreased dopamine so we need to increase this, increase this dopamine in a central nervous system but if you give levodopa peripherally it will uh, because of presence of some enzymes it will uh, degenerate in periphery only 
and uh, peripheral blood only so the patient will start complaining of nausea and vomiting so you, you need to combine leiodopa with carbidopa which is a carboxylase inhibitor and because of this carboxylase inhibitor that is carbidopa the peripheral destruction of this leiodopa will be prevented and only that leiodopa will go in uh, central nervous system which will control parkinson's feature as i told you leiodopa benefits the classic motor features and if patient is not responding to leiodopa then you should not question your treatment you should question your diagnosis so probably you may not be uh, dealing with parkinson this is so the patient who is responding to leiodopa your uh, uh, diagnosis will be confirmed retrospectively so and if he is not responding to leiodopa you should question your diagnosis you should think of some other parkinsonism features like psp or maybe uh, some other uh, diseases so the limitation of leiodopa therapy is as i told you the common side effects are nausea vomiting and orthostatic hypotension and which will be reduced by carbidopa by uh, by adding leiodopa by giving carbidopa with leiodopa you will decrease uh, side effects of orthostatic hypotension or nausea or and vomiting and again at in late stages of parkinson's disease you will see uh, two major problem first is a dyskinesia and other is wearing off effect we will see it on the board the action of leiodopa remains only for 90 to uh, 120 minutes so you need to give a frequent doses of leiodopa so you may need to give four hourly leiodopa and in severe cases patient suffers two problem that is dyskinesia so the blood level of leiodopa will remain uh, on changing uh, in the blood so this is where you give leiodopa and this duration may be uh, we can say 3 to 4 hours so when you give leiodopa this this is our desired level of dopamine this is our desired level this is desired level of uh, dopamine in the blood so when you give leiodopa so the level of dopamine will increase rapidly and patient will suffer from dyskinesia here so dyskinesia means abnormal movements abnormal movements we can say within hour or two the effect of leiodopa will win and here patient will complain of off effect so the at the low level of dopamine a patient will start complaining of freezing or increased symptoms of parkinson's features and at the high level of dopamine in the circulation patient will start complaining of dyskinesia so dyskinesia when patient receives leiodopa and at the end when the action of leiodopa goes down patient start complaining of severe symptoms of parkinson's disease a patient receiving leiodopa will complain in severe cases may present with dopamine dysregulation syndrome which is nothing but craving for leiodopa and patient take unnecessary and un infrequent uh, doses of leiodopa so it's like addiction so in severe uh, parkinsons patient may develop addiction for leiodopa when patient receives high doses of leiodopa patient will manifest purposeless behavior purposeless behavior i mean uh, patient will assemble some object and again disassemble all those objects it's a, it's a purposeless uh, behavior at all and it is called as a apodin so this is important for your mcq point of view coming to other group of drugs which can be helpful for this uh, treating parkinson's disease that is dopamine agonist there are two types that is ergot derivatives and non ergot dopamine agonist in ergot derivatives the drugs are of bromocriptin pergolid and cabergolin and this ergot derivatives because of their side effects we are rarely using all those ergot derivatives in non ergot dopamine agonist we have a pramipexol ropinirol and rotigotin and again a third class is of apomorphine so uh, in some cases when patient is having some functional limitation you can you have a two option whether you can directly go for leiodopa and carbidopa combination or you can go and select dopamine agonist you can select pranipexol or ropinirol and the, this third drug what i am talking about that is apomorphine apomorphine is basically it's it's not available in oral form it's available in injectable form and this apomorphine will be helpful to, to decrease uh, it will be helpful uh, for emergency treatment of this off period 
so when patient is when patient uh, develop severe symptoms of parkinson's disease so you can immediately push this apomorphine and patient will relieve of all those symptoms and patients who are receiving dopamine agonist will have less chances of developing uh, dyskinesia which is associated with leudopa therapy so a dopamine agonist will helpful for off period as well as will helpful for on period that is dyskinesia associated with leudopa coming to next class of drug that is monoamine oxidase b inhibitor which blocks central dopamine metabolism and increases synaptic concentration of neurotransmitter that is dopamine and the examples are selegilin and rasagilin and it decreases off time but increases dyskinesia because of a decreased degeneration of dopamine there will be increase in dopamine level so dyskinesia will increase but off period will also uh, go down so positive effect on off period but the chances of developing dyskinesia will increase regarding this uh, mao b inhibitors we have two points to remember uh, for uh, mcq point of view that is chase effect patient who is taking this mao b uh, inhibitors should not take cheese if they uh, took that uh, substance patient will develop severe hypertension that is fatal hypertension reaction and if not controlled patient may go into malignant hypertension and also will lead to some major brain damage or kidney damage so this is important the cheese effect of mao b inhibitors and second thing this mao b inhibitor that is silicilin also seems to have some positive disease modifying effects so some clinician uh, thinks we should start these drugs earlier even before starting leudopa because of its their role as a disease modifying agent coming to next class, class of drug that is co comt inhibitors they increases the elimination of half life of leudopa the examples are tolcapone and entecapone this again we can combine it with uh, leudopa coming to a surgical treatment when patient is not responding to all those drugs like comt inhibitors mao b inhibitors or leudopa or dopamine agonist then uh, some may respond to deep brain stimulation and the target of deep brain stimulation uh, are subthalamic nucleus and globus pallidus so they uh, stimulate globus pallidus and uh, subthalamic nucleus and the clinical features of parkinsons will improve so coming to management of non motor and non dopaminergic features so as i told you there are motor features and non motor features so some non motor features will improve with treatment uh, with leudopa but some may need a uh, treatment like antidepressant benzodiazepines for anxiety atypical neuroleptics or antipsychotic for psychosis and uh, we need to treat auto autonomic disturbances also we need to ask patient to modify his lifestyle in view of controlling orthostatic hypotension so we can advise to take uh, more salt in his diet and also more uh, fluid the role of non, non pharmacological therapy again canes and walkers may be necessary in in stage of parkinson disease so we will see what is the general approach for uh, parkinson's disease we will see it uh, on the board so when you diagnose a patient of parkinson's disease so we have a uh, options whether to select non pharmacological therapy or pharmacological therapy. so pt is pharmacological therapy and if there are significant fun functional impairment so we have a uh, two options if there is functional impairment so we have two option as i told you first option is leudopa and other option is dopamine agonist if those patient are not patients are not responding to one drug that is dopamine agonist or leudopa so we need to combine uh, both that is leudopa along with dopamine agonist plus comt inhibitors or mao b inhibitors so at the end we can combine leudopa along with dopamine agonist along with mao inhibitors and also comt inhibitors and if patients are not responding to all those combination we have a option of surgery that is deep brain stimulation dbs deep brain stimulation so this is a general approach for treating patients of parkinson disease this is approach for treating motor features we have also options of uh, treating non motor features like depression we can give antidepressants we can give uh, anxiety anxiolytics benzodiazepines even we can give antipsychotics so this was general approach for uh, parkinson's disease before concluding we will we will see what is atypical parkinsonism so atypical parkinsonism 
as I told you, if patient is not responding to levodopa, you should question your diagnosis. So your differential diagnosis may be atypical Parkinsonism. And the example of atypical par Parkinsonism are multiple system atrophy, progressive supranuclear palsy, cortibasal ganglionic degeneration, and frontotemporal dementia. So these four diagnoses should be in your mind when patient is not responding to levodopa. So the feature of atypical Parkinsonism is patient is not responding to levodopa. Second thing, the, cl the clinical features are not so classical as in Parkinson's disease. So the tremors may be absent, the bradykinesia may be absent, but features like fall, so fall or early speech impairment is very common. And uh, classically, you may say there will be an absent of raised tremor and the course of all these atypical Parkinson's are aggressive. So patients uh, deteriorate very fast compared to typical Parkinson's disease. So this is uh, important for your MCQ. So second point I wanted to discuss regarding exam point of view. What we have seen is degenerative Parkinsonism. So you should also aware of secondary Parkinsonism. And here the question can be asked, what are the causes of secondary Parkinsonism? So your uh, answer should be drugs like carbon monoxide, cyanide and CPTP. So this uh, should be your answer. Other causes of secondary Parkinsonism are tumor, infection, vascular, NPH that is normal pressure hydrocephalus, trauma and liver failure. So these are all causes of secondary Parkinsonism. Uh, we discuss what is Parkinson's disease, what is atypical Parkinson's, what is secondary Parkinsonism. We have discussed what is the general approach for treating Parkinson's disease, what, are, what is the role of leodopa, what is the role of dopamine agonist and what is the role of deep brain stimulation. So it was a discussion regarding Parkinson's disease. Thank you.